coming up this week on Archer's Choice. Make sure he doesn't drop in the water. Hey, welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. Did you know MR James shot that bull? That's pretty cool. Pretty cool, huh? It is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. We are back up. Moose Mania, River. baby. That's right. We are back up with McMill River Adventures, and we are also still at the Pope and Young Museum. Really? Yes. Oh. I wish this was my sick. house, really. I could dig it, you know what it's I mean? Kind of cool. Big out. You'd be way too dangerous with all these bows in here and arrows and broadheads and everything. Yeah, no, oh, it's man. not gonna happen. Hey, this week's lucky logo is Plano. Plano That's keeps right. you all your gear protected all the time, no matter what situation, no matter what condition. Plano. Watch for the Plano logo, and we'll let you know what to do that at the end of the show. And this here. That's cool. Leon made that for us. Leon when we made were up this he in made it camp. For, for it me. was very cool. Leon, you made it for me, didn't you? It says V and R. So it'd be Vicky and Ralph. So your second thought on that. Hey, let's just, you know what? We got lots more to share with you. So much more. Here at more. the museum, up in the Yukon. Let's just get going, okay? It's my turn. Because, well, let's recap and show you what, well, what happened with Vicky. Last week on Archer's Choice, we showed you my hunt where we got up in the morning, we got in the boat, and it was really cold and frosty out. We started going upriver, and as we came around a curve, we ended up spotting a bull, big old bull just kind of laying there, and as we came around the corner, he stood up. Immediately, we got off the boat, Don grabbed the paddle, I grabbed my bow, Ralph grabs the camera, and we're off for the stalk. When we first saw him, he was probably 100 yards. We got up to less than 18 yards on this bull, and when the opportunity came and he went broadside, all I had to do was draw my vixen back, and it was over. Look at those fronts, huh? Yeah, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> oh. That's a big old bull too, huh? <laughs> yeah. White baby, check this out. 57 pounds, 26 inch draw, one arrow, one hellraiser, one beaming, and this baby didn't go 30 yards. My bull is down and we decided we're back in camp and we said we're gonna make dinner for everyone. So of course we're gonna have spaghetti and garlic bread. Well, I made the garlic bread on an open wood fire stove, which was unbelievably good, if I must say so myself. We were up there, we're shooting our bows. Don had his new TC up there, so he was gonna be able to hunt with his TC very soon. And if not this week with us, then maybe next. Then we did some fishing, the sky was blue. It's, it's just amazing up there. And the camp itself, we're staying in wall tents, which, I mean, we've hunted Alaska, we've hunted all over the place. In the Yukon, there's nowhere better than being in a wall tent. When you got a wall tent with wood burning stove, it doesn't matter if it's raining or snowing or what it's doing outside. When you know you can go back to camp, get dry, get warm, and sleep good and tight, there's nothing better than that. I'll tell you, one of the things that's pretty fun, and that is sharing camp with people that are really into it. And, and this, this trip was pretty special. Leon was there, and I mean, he, what a cool dude. I mean, this guy had talents, very artistic. He actually made us this moose call. And it was amazing to watch him in the process that he did, you know, with, with, with the birch and the birch bark. And he actually showed me how he made these little rivets and everything to him was just detailed. He made the bow. He even put a wrap on the grip. He's got the arrows with the fletching. He put Archer's Choice, the name of it here. And then what he did is he put a little heart with Vicki and Ralph. And what's really, really cool is, you know, I watched him do the whole thing. We went out and we shot a couple bulls using this call and we even got some Moose Mania blood on it. Yep, 
I'm gonna hand this one down to RJ. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. Now again, we're in the Pope and Young Museum, which is really cool, and right here we have Saxton Pope, and they have him pictured shooting the first black bear ever with a bow and arrow on record. That's pretty cool. One of the strategies that Don had was, he said, you know what, this day, let's pack up some gear. We're gonna go up to Tay Strip, but it's way up there. It's a few hours, you know, up the Tay River. So we go all the way up, we spend the night, We are way, way up river. So where it took us a couple hours to get to, we are right there now. So we have a canoe ride out of Tay Strip here for about 15, 20 minutes. Don's got the boat. We gotta take it out of this real shallow bay. He's gonna come up right to the river. And then we're going downstream. We were just slowly and quietly drifting down the river, calling at every corner and every flat, and we heard um, a bull answer up on top of the on top of the bank. We managed to find a spot where we could get out of the boat. We had a little difficulty; there were some steep banks, but uh, we got out, made an approach, uh, got a response from the bull, and actually heard a cow calling as well. You know, the crazy thing is, is, you know, our, well, the guys went up to Alaska in 20, 1922 and 23, and they stayed there for months hunting the grizzly, the brown bear, the dull sheep, and well, what's super cool is we're also able, we got permission to share with you. When Art, when he went up there and he shot his moose, shot a bunch of other critters, he actually made a silent movie that a lot of people don't know about. We have some of the footage, and we're just gonna share with you. Remember, it's silent but it's some awesome stuff. You gotta understand, they were hunting Alaska in the great frontier with absolutely no gun backup. Mr. Young then would travel the country giving seminars and showing this film. At one appearance in Detroit, Michigan, Art met a young man, his name was Fred Bear. You know, when we watch shows today, you know, and, and, and like we all do in the wilderness, we have all the luxuries of today's technology. Think about back then, the hardships that they had to go through. They didn't have nylon pup tents that you could carry on your back. They had none of this stuff. They didn't have range finders. Man, they didn't have rubber boots. <laughs> they had nothing. They didn't have waders. And yet they made it. They did it. They, they are the forefathers of what all came to be. And we are blessed to have people like that to see where to take our next bow hunting adventures. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. Well, now I'm hanging out with Mr. Glenn St. Charles. Did you know he's actually the founder of Pope and Young, and he's the one that started the record books for it. A lot of the stuff that's within this building was his. And then on top of it, when he first came through the museum, he noticed the clothing that was on his figure here, and he thought, you know what, I wouldn't wear wool all year long. I'd wear, you know, something lighter. So he made sure he sent some of his own clothing up here to make sure they could change the diorama clothing. That is probably the most recognized hunting hat, bar none. Whose is it? It's the bear man himself, Fred Bear, and that's his fedora. How tough is that? That's what's at this museum. It's all kinds of artifacts and tons of bear archery stuff. For example, magnesium, A riser, number three limbs. That's my bow, that's how I started. That's so cool. 
Talking about me getting started, it is time. I'm ready to rock and roll. We're heading back up to the Yukon with Don Lynn, McMillan River Adventures, and it's my turn to cure that, Mc, that moose mania that I and Vicky have so bad. Bull wasn't very aggressive. He, we got some glimpses of him. Uh, he was coming and then he'd hold up and we decided that he probably didn't want to leave the cow that he was with. So we decided to go after him. we got this hot bull he's going back and forth we could hear cows so we know he's got some cows so we can't see him we can hear him and we're like come on well Don and I are both vertically challenged <laughs> but Don jumps up on the log and he's able to see it he sees the big tines going back and forth and like this bulls like 70 yards away well it's time to do some serious yeah moose mania <laughs> You know, we finally, we finally see this bull because Don jumped up on the log and we're looking at him and we know, I mean, yeah, he's a shooter. Problem is it's the rut. He's got two cows with him and he's, well, he's doing his thing and we're trying to do ours. And you just, it's a cat and mouse game going back and forth, just trying to figure it all out. And you know, we finally, I got, I got within 40 yards, feel real comfortable and well,
Well, finally the bull stands up and he's he's within 40 yards and uh you know I, I came to full draw I'm on him and I release and man my arrow was going right where it wanted where I, I thought I wanted it to go it hits that leg bone and instead of it going just busting through it actually kicks off and starts to go it, it goes more forward well I know it's it's in him but you know that predator instinct takes over and I'm like hey Vicky, stay here. Stand and he right takes there. off, but as he's standing there, he you know he, he he's you know he's not doing well. We Whoa. Don and I just go with Whoa. the paddle and we go and I just w wait, I go through the brush, we range him, and you know we we put another arrow into him. Whoa. 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 The second shot was right where I needed it to go. go he to takes cows. off. He goes to try to follow the cows, and Don looks at me. I look at him, and we're like, moose mania, baby. One of my thoughts when we were chasing uh, Ralph's bull was, oh, my gosh, this thing's back in, you know, several hundred yards off the river. It's going to be a long, tough pack out of here. There was lots of burnt windfall. Uh, we got a little bit lucky. When the bull was hit, he turned and ran towards the river. When I come over the hill behind Ralph and saw that bull laying in the water, I thought, oh, man. But it, it turned out well. Uh, he was only in 8 to 10 inches of water, and it worked out really well. Holy smokes, what a bull. We're here with McMillan River Adventures, and we are doing what we do, moose mania. And my rocky boots are 6 or 8 inches high, and the water's 10 or 12. <laughs> Another magnificent moose here. McMillan, I'm telling you, if you're ever, ever looking to, to satisfy the moose mania addiction that we have, and you can't do it any better place than right here. Except, make sure he doesn't drop in the water. Congratulations. Well, finally, it's about time that I got to put two shots in a moose. Usually it's you, you know what I mean? Yeah, but finally, it landed in the river. Yeah, but I planned it that way because I wanted the meat clean. No, it landed there and it wasn't bigger than mine, so yeah. it doesn't matter. I think it was. It maybe <laughs> wasn't wider, but I thought it's it was bigger. All it yeah, we don't need to talk to Don because I thought Don said it was it way bigger. It yeah. As far, it had more points, no. yes. It was, paddles were wider. Mine had non-typical stick on the back. So that doesn't count. We want to thank everyone up at McMillan River Adventures. Hey, like, Don and all matter, the guys up there. We no, just had a it great doesn't. moose hunt. Again, Moose Mania, the ultimate place to moose hunt. Absolutely. Hey, if you happen to see the Lucky Logo this week, which was Plano. Plano's need, Lucky Logo? It's a Plano logo. Logo, logo, lucky. <laughs> you need to log on to archerschoice.com, click on that Lucky Logo button. Fill out some information and someone's going to win some great prizes from Plano and a lot of other actually manufacturers that have been donating stuff. And next week, we're heading up to Adrenaline, up in Manitoba with Russ Mellon and the guys, and well, they're bearing down. But most of all, we want to take this minute to thank the Pope and Young Club. Yes, absolutely. Folks, you need to understand, so whether you're a member or not, they fund this entire museum, and this museum is all about the history of what we all have come to love and cherish, and really what makes us, make us all tick. Really, absolutely. wouldn't you and say? You know what? Bring the family up. It's free admission. So that the, even the, all the kids can understand the heritage of bow hunting. I mean, this is huge. This is a big place. I mean, the history behind all this and, and the wealth of knowledge that the guys have, you know, Kevin and Glenn, and I mean, they know it all. And, and just to share this, even if you're not a member, we're going to ask a favor. Call up the Pope and Young Club. Call them up and donate, whether it's a dollar, whether it's five dollars, whatever it may be. Let's help this museum to continue to grow and that they can bring more artifacts in so that they could teach, and I mean, the schools, the kids, and everybody. To keep our bow hunting heritage going strong, we need to keep it going on. This is priceless, and it's up to us to keep it going. And we've really destroyed all their days. Yeah, we, we wrecked their day We've here. wrecked mm -hmm. their day. We've been all romping, tromping all over the place here, and you know, hey, it is what it is. It we is. really hope that we can keep it growing stronger. Absolutely. So? So, so it's time to close it. So, so we'll see you next week, same time. Same channel. Right here on, on the, the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice. Baron down in Manitoba. Moose, Adrenaline Moose baby. Mania. No, next week. Yeah, but Moose Mania, we just got done I with Moose I think I'm going to talk to you. He don't want to talk to you.